My name is Parker, and I'm very glad for you to be here today. Um, this weekend is a game that we've been looking forward to all year long. We always do. Um, it's a match against our noisy neighbors, Arsenal. Um, you know, they're the gooners. You know, they're the filth, whatever we want to call them. Uh, this game means a lot to us. Um, it just means everything to us. So um, I think this is the most important derby, uh, you know, uh, in the Premier League. Uh, you know, there's the Manchester City, Manchester United derby this weekend. Um, that means a lot, but this one, this one means a lot to us. Um, so it's anything but lose this game, right? Um, you know, this is going to determine the top of the table, right? So this is a big game. Um, also, guys, if you're new to the channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Um, so that way you can keep in touch with us. Um, and don't forget to hit that like button as well. Um, cause that will just motivate me more, uh, to create more content for you. And it just shows that you like the content. So yeah. And you can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at mile high hotspur. Uh, again, Instagram and Twitter at mile high hotspur. So let's get right into it. Let's bring in my guest. Hey, how's it going, DJ? How you Parker. doing, man? Parker, how the hell are you, man? <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, thanks for coming on to the show. Hey, ever since you started this bit, I've always wanted to get on, and now we have the North London Derby to talk about. Absolutely. It's the perfect time, man. Uh, yeah, I've wanted you on for a while, so finally it's here. Um, so let's talk about the North London Derby, man. So what does that mean to you? I mean, it's such a big deal to so many soccer fans out there, football fans. Um, yeah. I mean, when it comes to, uh, you know, everyone's going to say, Every game is worth three points, but this is something a little more, right? This feels like a six-pointer, especially now when you see us at the top of the table together. Um, man, I mean, this is just one of those that gets the emotions going, right? If you lose the game, if I lose the game, we're both not talking to people for the rest of the weekend. It uh, yeah. Honestly, I might not talk until we win a game again, right? So yeah. there's a lot, a lot of emotion into it, a lot of blood. <laughs> there's going to be some some bad tackles. There's going to be some uh, – Yep. Uh, some good trash talk. I mean, a friendly banter back and forth. But I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's uh, it's probably the best rivalry in all the Premier League. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think this is probably going to be the best game of the weekend. I mean, even though there's another derby this weekend, the Manchester derby, it just this, this one man. just. I mean, we're a little biased because you know what we support, but like this derby is just it's more important because we're at the top of the table. It really depend. It really, you know, it matters this game. Um, if we win, you know, we, you know, leapfrog you to first place and you guys can like, it is a big deal because like, if we lose against Arsenal, it's a huge deal. Like our confidence is going to go down. Um, we're, we're going to be stuck in third, um, you know, Brighton's right behind us, you know, uh, Manchester United are gaining speed, gaining momentum and stuff. So, uh, we need this confidence right now. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's tough. I mean, I don't want to bring up the past because obviously this is, this is going to come back to bite me, right? But, I mean, I think it's been, what, games since you guys have gotten a, a victory away at Arsenal? It's been something crazy. That, um, I don't. I could say neither team are very good away at each other's uh, rounds. So, I don't know. I don't point, know. Yeah. We'll see. yeah, I mean, you guys, um, I don't think you've given up a clean sheet at, at uh, yet at home this year. No, no, we haven't. Read that. So, yeah, I think there's going to be some goals – this weekend and uh it's definitely going to be a good one um so yeah like you said like after the game if we lose like we're just kind of like it affects our mood like these games really do it feels like a cup game almost you know oh, yeah. so yeah i mean like i said we're the first game of the weekend this is really a big deal we can get we can get first so there's a lot on the line um and like like north london is really gunning for this like top spot in the premier league um it's Manchester City are right there with us, um, but who do you, who else do you think is really a contender this year for the title? Because I know like Arteta really wants this title more than like an FA Cup, for instance. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's won the FA Cup, right? But yeah, I mean, this title would mean a lot. I do think we got to look at this as uh, two two teams in two different windows a little bit, right? Arsenal last year we came in eighth, or not eighth? No, that was two years ago. Last year we came in fifth. 
you guys pass this up at the end. I think two games left is pretty horrible. I don't want to talk about it. But we're a team that's uh, the youngest team in the Premier League. Um, you guys are going in your golden age of when you guys got to produce. You have a fantastic yeah. game. Um, honestly, this is your – like, these next two years are your years to, to do some damage, right? Um, I would love to say that we're there. I'm very I'm very happy where we are, but I did not expect it. I don't think anyone expected it. That's uh, true, yeah. But if I were to say who's going to us right now, <clears throat> obviously you got Man City, who I think is the favorite for the title. Um, you uh, Spurs and Arsenal are right there, two, three, really depends. I mean, can can one of us pull it off? Possibly, right? Um, and then if I were going to put my money on anyone, I think if Liverpool can get a healthy midfield, it's going to help out their def- defense. Uh, and that's kind of been their Achilles heel, right? I mean, they're playing guys that are super young in midfield. It's nothing like the Thiago's. Right, it's nothing like. Um, oh man, I'm trying to figure out their man Henderson, even though I don't rate Nino, maybe. Yo, even though I don't rate much, great captain, but I don't think he's that good of a player. Um, you got the Milners that are coming in at this time, so they're hurting a little bit. But I think once they get healthy, they're going to be up at the top competing. Chelsea, yeah. kind of. Um, and then who? United. I think they need some time under Ten Hag, kind of understand who they are. I think he's done a great job with the club, turning it around, um, and yeah. not letting. You know, the, uh, the locker room become a poison chalice like it was years past. So it's going to be interesting. My money's on Liverpool to compete. Yeah, yeah Ten. Ho- I think Ten Hag is definitely a good leader. Um, I think if anybody, like you said, is going to pull that club from, like, where they've been for the last, like, seven years or whatever, it's going to be him. Um, so, yeah, they're going to they're gonna creep up. And Chelsea, for me, like, I think they're going to fall apart. I think they're going the other direction. I, I think so. And it's not just because I hate Chelsea, but. I think just their new leadership is just running it to the ground. And I, I don't know. I think it'll affect the players too eventually. So um, they've only had one window so far, but let's see like after January, let's see like how many players they get rid of and how many they bring in. And it just, it could be, you know, it could spell disaster for Chelsea. So I don't see them at all like fighting for the title. So that's my opinion, but. Yeah. And just one thing to add there. I mean, the most creative players, they're outside back reach. So, I mean, that's going to be kind of tough. Yeah. I mean, they have Havertz, and he scores goals and stuff, but um, uh, it's, it's nowhere near, like, a, like a you know, a number nine striker. You know what I mean? So Well, they have I a Bong Yeah. They got a Bong Ying, and I know you like him, of course, but. Uh, uh, feelings. I liked him when he joined. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he might be, you know, past his prime, I feel like now. So. We'll see. But yeah, I think, yeah, North London is really going for the title. Like, let's talk about, like, the tactics that we've used kind of, like, to stay there. I mean, hopefully, like, we both stay there. Because I actually like fighting, you know, for a title with you guys. Or fighting for a spot, any kind of spot. Fourth place, I think it's exciting. Um, But yeah, we both use different tactics. So, kind of explain Arsenal's tactics a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as you were alluding to, it is better having both teams at the top. A lot more passion-fueled. It's great seeing... I mean, everyone wants a competitive title race, right? It's not fun having a two-horse race or one-horse race and things like that. So I love seeing it. Uh, when it comes to tactics, I mean, I think Arteta's come in. Um, he got rid of basically all the cancers in the locker room, in my opinion. Um, he definitely brought in, when it comes to recruitment, a bunch of young talent. Everyone's hungry. Everyone's working for yeah. each other. We haven't seen that in a long time, and that might have been an issue when it comes to um, kind of our wage bill. I mean, we put superstars there and then we on huge wages, and they got complacent. I mean, that's what happens. But tactically... I think we, you could call us a Man City light, possibly, the way we're trying to play. Um, okay. Obviously, we don't have the world-class players they do. We have a lot of uh, players trying to find themselves, uh, players trying to be leaders. But the way we play is very possession-based. I think this year we're one of the more exciting teams, um, as of right now, to watch play, just because the way we move the ball, um, the interconnect, give and goes, um, and just really playing, in my opinion, total total soccer, but or football, my bad. But uh, – I'm really enjoying it right now. I know that uh, we had our first challenge against United. It uh, didn't go too well. I think we dominated the game, played them off the pitch at Old Trafford for about 60 minutes, and they they took their chance as well. I mean, we were susceptible on the counter, which is why it's kind of it's kind of terrifying playing you guys, considering you're better at countering than United. Exactly. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting, and I mean, I got the most praise for Conte. Done with your club is phenomenal. Um, he's made you hard to beat. Can't sit. I don't think you can sit here and say you guys play the best. But you're winning, and, you, and you're taking and the the tail of a great. Team. So it's going to be interesting. What's your take on it? Yeah, um, 
Yeah, I think you're right. So I think it'll be a lot of possession for Arsenal um, and counterattacking. There's going to be a lot of goals. Um, you know, we both have scored in every game so far. So it's going to be it's going to be a goal fest, I think. Um, but yeah, we we really do like to like do those counterattacks on our wing backs. Um, that's kind of Conte's system and kind of like what he likes to do. So yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be a brilliant game. I just can't wait. Um, are there any players from Tottenham that you would take um, on your Arsenal squad? Or I mean, as much as I hate to say it, absolutely. Um, I think there's yeah. three or four that come to mind. I uh, I don't rate your midfield too highly, but I do think uh, looking at the players that we that we target when we we try to bring them in, Kulusevski one would be a fantastic addition to our squad. I think you guys have seen the value out of him. Um, Harry Kane, I mean. He's a world-class striker. I mean, I, it hurts me to say it, but he is. He is. And then who doesn't want some? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I would love to add them all to my attack, right? Yeah. Defender-wise, Romero, I mean, you, hate <clears throat> him, you love that he's on your team. Oh, yeah. He's definitely a bully. He's almost like Richarlison. So they're I both know. like the South American bullies for us. I get you. How about you? <laughs> players that, uh, yeah. Um, I would take Saka in a second. Um, I don't think that he would start for me, but he would definitely be on my bench for sure. And he would definitely be a substitute, like probably my first substitute and, uh, kind of just see where he goes from there. But yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic player. Phenomenal. Um, Martinelli, he's really good. He's so young still. So there's still a lot to come from him. Um, I think you guys would probably do, you know, better just keeping him for long term and see what he can, you know, develop into. Um, and then, Obviously, like you said, you kind of touched on our midfield isn't the greatest. I would take Odengard, too. Um, we need, like, that left foot midfielder attacking, you know, creative midfielder. So, yeah, Odengard definitely starts for me in my midfield. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a couple players for each team, yeah, that we would probably take. So um, that just shows that we're both pretty good squads, and um, it's just going to be a good game. I just can't wait. So. Yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, I'm sure <clears throat> you have Twitter as well, but a lot of people are making their combined North London Derby team between Arsenal and, and Spurs. And, uh, and yeah. split half and half, to be honest with you. So, yeah, yeah, that just goes to show this is going to be a pretty awesome game. Yeah, I feel like if there was like a uh, kind of like what uh, Chelsea's owner was talking about, like an all-star game between the North and South, I think, feel like it would be a lot of Arsenal and Tottenham players in there. So have to be. That's what I think. So. But yeah, what's your um, predicting your score prediction for this one? Yeah, all right. This kind of hinges on uh, one specific player if he's going to play or not. Uh, Thomas Partey. If Thomas Partey is in the game, we're winning at three one. Um, really? Without, without, without a doubt. Uh, I, you just going to dominate I, the midfield? Do you think or what? Yeah. So I guess this also comes down to tactics, right? Are you guys going to do a three five? What three five two? So that's yeah, quick math. Yeah, three five two. If you play that, I think then you guys are going to try to bully the midfield. Um, whoever wins the midfield, to me, is going to win the game. And that might be a blanket statement, but at the end of the day, if you let us have possession at home, it's going to be hard to keep us out. Maybe tactically, if you guys sit and play an amazing game, you could pull out a draw, get a win because we are susceptible on the counter. But I do think it's our carpet, it's our home. You haven't beat us there in like twelve some games. I don't know in a row. It's going to be tough gonna be tough and it's gonna be tough for both teams right you guys are not an easy team to break down but you haven't been playing your best ball i think it would have happened before the international break i would have been a little more confident i'm not super confident when i say 3-1 but that's uh yeah it, if that's that's what i'm going with 3-1 arsenal yeah all right so um that's a good shout i think that i think it's going to be 3-2 or 3-1 um i know we're going to score three goals i think so um <laughs> i know that hurts you but um, so yeah, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Like I, I really want to say three, two, um, because I think our right side, our right wing back side defensively is not as great. Romero can't quite cover it all by himself. So I think Martinelli will get one. Um, and I think Saka will get one too, just because he's just, you know, I think he's great. So he'll get a goal. Um, I mean, we didn't even talk about injuries. Are there any injuries for Arsenal that we have to look out for? Yeah, so I guess that's why I put in Party there, right? Uh, Party came out of the Ghana warm-up uh, before their first international uh, friendly against um, Brazil. Pulled out with a thigh injury. Um, this thigh injury 
been plaguing him for the better part of a year. So I'm a little worried about, about him. The center mid made last reminds me a lot of Diaby at times. Okay. Uh, so if he's out, Tottenham win. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't, I don't say that. <laughs> I think it's going to be a better game, but I think that he, I mean, he transforms our midfield. Um, and it's tough. We don't have a backup. When we're talking about depth, we our 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 backup uh, can't can't cover the ground. He does doesn't have the, the the calm on the ball. It doesn't possess quite the quality that he has. So I mean, he's big for us. I mean, we, we already touched our uh, Emil Smith Rowe out till December. Uh, he has yeah. played not that big. And then Zinchenko, I guess he would slot in defensive mid because he can play that. He's played that for Ukraine, but he's also been out with an injury. Um, so are we going to start um, yeah. Tierney as a left back, who's better defensively but not as good going forward? And if we have to unlock those channels against a, a tight defense like you guys have, it, it's going to be tough. What about you guys? Yeah, so we have two players that are kind of questionable right now. Uh, the Reese picked up an injury like his first game – or no, sorry, the first practice of international break with France. So, um, so he's had a little bit of time to kind of recover, so he's questionable uh, day by day. And then we also have Kulisevsky that just picked up a hamstring injury. Just recently, I think it was like yesterday, the day before, which is like towards the end of the international break. So um, he's he's questionable. We don't know if he's going to be playing. So um, if he doesn't play, then maybe we'll see Lucas come in too um, as a sub a little earlier than you know than he would normally. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a little different than normal. We got we don't know if Larice is going to play. So um, we could have Fraser Forster in there. So and. He's not the greatest. Right. He's getting I mean, be five, like, five one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that case, it could be. Yeah, it could be a, definitely a goal fest for you guys. So, but I don't know. I'm kind of. I don't know. I'm five percent in favor. But I don't know. He he played a, uh, some of our uh, preseason games and he didn't look too bad. Um, he came in, you know, just to like get some minutes in. Uh, he didn't look too bad. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll see. But as as for the score, I think 3-2, two, 2 for Kane, uh, Mr. North London Derby himself, okay. I must add. Um, he'll get two. Sonny is just – he's on a roll. Uh, I think he got one in uh, his international break, too. He got a free kick, um, not even to include, you know, the free, uh, the hat trick that he got in, like, 13 minutes. So, yeah, he's on a roll right now. So, he's going to he's gonna grab one, too. And then, uh, yeah, like Saka and I think Martinelli on the, on the – um, on the wings are going to grab something. So I think you should watch out for Jesus a little bit. I think he's a big time player yeah. Scored against real Madrid for man city in the champions league semifinal. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah. He's good too. Um, I just think it'll definitely be like created from those wings, you know, like we'll give, we'll give somebody space and he'll have enough space to pass it right to Gabriel Jesus or something like that. So, so yeah, that's what I think, but yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be a great game. So, Definitely looking forward to. I got you. All right, man. Well, I think that about wraps it up. So, DJ, thanks for joining us. Um, we're actually just me because I'm the only one here. So, thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, until next week uh, against Brighton. Goodbye. Break, 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 break it down.